A Very Royal Narcissist, Part 9 The ongoing situation involving the Duke and Duchess of Sussex provides a very useful opportunity to explain what is really happening, as opposed to the mistaken observations being made in the media and to enable people to make sense of previously bewildering behaviours occurring in their lives. Part 9 was originally written on 12th of January 2020, but is still relevant to the assessment of this individual and to enable you to see the ongoing behaviours as this series is updated. Part 9 addresses further revelations relating to the Canadian Prime Minister, the situation with Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, Disney, the rift with the royal family, and the planned talks to seek resolution of the situation that occurred at the time with regard to the separation between Harry and Meghan and the royal family, part of the stepping back, as they described. The media at the time reported that talks would take place at Sandringham to deal with what had been dubbed Mexit. Prince Harry had been left in the UK by his wife to undertake the discussions with the royal family alone, and she returned to Canada under the auspices of caring for Archie, their son. Were Miss Markle a non-narcissist, and thus one would view her behaviours through the prism of not being a narcissist, then she would exhibit emotional empathy, and most likely wouldn't have left Archie alone to begin with, but if she had, her return would have been based on caring for him. As an unaware narcissist, she thinks that this is what she is doing. However, owing to her narcissism, she is asserting control over various individuals, principally Prince Harry as the intimate partner primary source. She is exhibiting a lack of accountability by not being present at the talks, and also a sense of entitlement. More about the forthcoming talk follows in a moment. But first, some comment on other information which has arisen and has been reported in the media. It is important, before continuing with this update and analysis, to preface it with two important points. First, by stating that everything that is reported may not necessarily be accurate, and one should always bear that in mind. However, what one is able to do is explain that such behaviour, if reported accurately, what it amounts to in relation to the concept of narcissism. If what has been reported didn't occur, then it can be discounted. Most of the time, the media does report the activity correctly, and therefore this enables us to explain what this behaviour means through the prism of narcissism. Secondly, and I've made this point before, and I'll repeat it again for the heart of understanding, this analysis is about narcissism and how to understand what is occurring, so people realise why certain actions have been taken and why certain things have been said and done. It is nothing to do with the subject's race or gender. Narcissists come in all sizes, colours, genders and sexual orientations. If you make the mistake of thinking that this analysis, and it is an analysis, not an attack, is based on race and or gender, Please do then listen to the videos A Very Murderous Narcissist, A Very Hollywood Narcissist, A Very Deflecting Narcissist. Also read A Very Potus Narcissist, A Very Potus Narcissist Threat of Impeachment, A Very Murderous Narcissist, A Very Pitiful Narcissist. These appertain to men. Who are white. With that all stated, let's get down to business and update the situation further. Number one, news just in. It was reported that the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, was apparently told about the Sussex's plan to move to Canada before anybody else, which includes Prince Harry's own family. Such a step and demonstrates belittlement, suggesting Prince Harry's family should not know first about the stated intention because they're not important enough to know. The assertion of control. I'm putting you in your place and showing you that I am the controller, not the controlled. Of course, done unconsciously. Sense of entitlement. I do what I want. I neither have regard for politeness nor doing the right thing or protocol. Lack of emotional empathy. I am unable to concern myself with how it makes you feel to learn that we told someone else about our proposal before you, so I did as I did. Triangulation. I'm involving someone else in this in order to provoke you, and by provoking you, I control you. Remember, these are all instinctive responses governed by the narcissism. Think about your own situation. If you were considering moving to another country, 
Would you place an advertisement in the paper, splash it over social media, and then tell the police chief in the town and the country you were moving to that you were moving there ahead of telling your family and friends? No, you would not. Why? Because you have emotional empathy, and you don't need to assert control. You're not manipulative. Two, Disney beckons. Filmed footage from an onlooker surfaced showing Prince Harry at an attendance of the Lion King, which also took him away from his charitable obligations, as explained in A Very Royal Narcissist Number 2, and was seen asking an executive with Disney about the potential for Miss Markle to undertake voiceover work for Disney, in effect touting for work for her. Such behaviour demonstrates the hold that is exerted over Prince Harry, in that he will, clouded by his own addiction to the narcissist, do anything to try to please and appease Miss Markle, including such steps as crassly seeking a job opportunity on her behalf. Bear in mind as well that Prince Harry is not the brightest of bulbs. Don't fall for thinking that this is just the mistake of a not-so-clever chap, and that is of course part of the equation, but his failure is to see how this looks. See also the merchandising steps taken with regard to trademarking the Sussex brand. Demonstrates that he's held in a cloud of emotional thinking, whereby he can't see logically what's happening to him and how this is affecting his behaviour. Other people will see it, those close to him, although of course that closeness is being eroded by the common narcissistic ma manipulation of isolation. However, trying to point this out to him will fail, because his logic has been clouded through the control of the narcissist over him. These somewhat crass and opportunistic, opportunistic behaviours are a manifestation of the effect of the narcissism on Prince Harry. If you have been ensnared by a narcissist, doubtless when you look back at what happened, you will identify the behaviours and ask yourself, what on earth came over me? This is what is also happening with Prince Harry and is the impact of the narcissist's control. 3. Water has become thicker than water. Prince Harry has chosen what his wife wants, uh, manipulated into thinking that is what he wants also, and has chosen, as it stood at the time, a six-month split between the United Kingdom and Canada. Now, people invariably spend more time with the person they are in love with and naturally see less of parents, siblings and extended family, but they don't wrench away with them in such wrench away from them in a dramatic fashion unless there is an influence of a narcissist at work. The apparent basis for this is facade management, as explained in A Very Royal Narcissist Part 7 and 8. The speed at which it has happened, the need to assert control, the manner in which it has happened, sense of entitlement and salami slicing, and the repercussions for Prince Harry, which he is unable to see, are in accordance with the behaviour of the narcissist. Narcissists must have control and complete control of their environments, and that includes the people in them and it is a repeated and standard form of manipulation to isolate the intimate partner, primary source, spouse, partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, of the narcissist from any influences that may threaten that control from the narcissist's alternate perspective. Therefore, the narcissist will pull the IPPS away from parents, siblings, and other members of the family. They will divide a person from their friends. This is done not only to remove what are seen as interfering elements from affecting control, but also by making the intimate partner primary source easier to control through a. depriving them of any support network and b. making the victim more heavily reliant on the narcissist as their supposed sole person of support. This will be done unconsciously by the narcissist through such actions as smearing the family members. They are trying to control you. I'm just trying to help you see that. Exaggeration of threat. They don't want you to be happy. I do. That's why they see me as a threat. Projection. Pity play. Your family don't like me. This country has it in for me, and I've tried so hard, you know. Tried the stiff upper lip, but they just don't like me. Guilt. If you loved me, you would move for me. Triangulation. If we stay, it will end up the same for me as it was for your mother, and you don't want that to happen to, do you, to you, do you? Use of the victim's weaknesses against them. See the early comment about triangulation. Promise gain. If we live there, we can do our own thing and both be happy. You do want that for us, don't you? Remember, the narcissist will do this invariably through unconscious manipulations. The narcissist actually believes that they are doing the right thing and cannot see, because of their narcissism, that they are actually being manipulative. Such manipulations will have been used in isolating Prince Harry from his father, brother, grandparents, friends and extended family. 
save those who are viewed as supportive and therefore no threat to the control, and thus choosing water over blood. As Prince William stated, as reported in the Sunday Times, I have put my arm around my brother all of our lives, and I cannot do that any more. We are separate entities. Number four, no sister-in-law love. Reports also state that Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton have not spoken to one another in six months. Previous very royal narcissist articles have identified the friction between the two judges. It's evident that Miss Markle has exhibited envy towards Kate Middleton, given her status as wife to the future king, and this envy threatens her control over Kate, who is a non-intimate secondary source in Miss Markle's fuel matrix. In order to assert control, Miss Markle has previously triangulated and mirrored the Duchess of Cambridge. This will have had temporary success. And then, Miss Markle has given absent silent treatment to the Duchess of Cambridge by not speaking to her. Where the Duchess has come back into Miss Markle's sphere of influence, she has maintained this silence in order to continue to assert control. The Duchess may well have tried to resolve issues by speaking with Miss Markle and or has decided not to try further because it has proven fruitless in resolving matters and therefore gives up. Such a situation may then be portrayed by the narcissist as part of a pity play, no such projection as being on the receiving end of a silent treatment from the non-narcissist when in fact it is not. The non-narcissist has just given up. Number five, the Sandringham Summit. At the time, a summit was to take place at Sandringham for the purpose of putting a series of scenarios and proposals to Prince Harry. It was understood that at the time Miss Markle would be joining the summit by telephone. Four main items were rumoured to be on the agenda. One, whether the Sussexes will keep their HRH titles. Two, the amount of royal duties they are expected to perform. Three, how they will be funded. Four, rules regarding potential commercial ventures. Various scenarios would most likely be provided to Prince Harry for the purpose of allowing him to understand the ramifications of the decision that has been made in an effort to look at alternatives. It's unlikely that the Sussexes will have thought through the implications of the decision to step back from royal duties. This is because the focus of Miss Markle is a need for unconscious control in the moment and not be concerned with future and collateral consequences. When these collateral consequences are pointed out, which would include the upset, dismay and hurt of Prince Harry's family towards this decision, the impact on his obligations of a member of the royal family, potential financial ramifications in respect of the difficulty of being self-funded, potential financial ramifications with regard to tax, no matter how logically these are presented, they will be seen, from Miss Markle's narcissistic perspective, as challenge fuel, which is one of the key interactions with the narcissist. The challenge fuel means that what is said and explained presents as a challenge to her sense of entitlement, her grandiosity, and lack of accountability, and all of that adds up to a threat to control. Control is the central need of the narcissist, and the actions of the royal family at the summit will serve to threaten Miss Markle's need for control. Prince Harry will either be blinded by his emotional thinking and just see what is being proposed as unfair, rather than looking at it logically, or more likely, he will recognise that there is some sense in what is being proposed, but will find himself caught between the reasonable suggestions of his family and the demands of his wife, and in the manner that an ensnared individual who is in devaluation responds, he will seek to keep the peace with his wife and do what she wants. This may well mean that there is no deal, and Prince Harry proceeds in accordance with Meghan Markle's demand. If some form of compromise is reached, it's important to recognise this will only be because it suits the narcissist, and that is how the apparent compromise, when actually when it isn't, is arrived at. To understand more about the narcissist's mindset in that regard, do have regard to the video Why the Arguments Are Never Resolved. The outcomes from the summit will either be the proposals of the royal family are deemed too much of a threat to the need for control and the Sussexes proceed, governed by Miss Markle's need for control in the already decided manner, or there is a deal which is only agreed because it serves the need for control. It is likely this will involve money, albeit kept quiet, so as to maintain the appearance, facade management, a financial appearance, whilst maintaining links and ties with the royal family. The Sussexes appear to agree a compromise, but it's not and it's only agreed to because it corresponds with what Miss Markle requires. Or Prince Harry makes a stand against the control he's being subjected to, in which case he can expect a savage response from his wife. This outcome is highly unlikely, given the level of control and devaluation Prince Harry is currently subjected to. 
His actions and comments are indicative of an individual who has been brainwashed into believing that his wife is the one who is right alongside a diminishing degree of willpower to put up any form of resistance. And, in such instances, it is invariably the narcissist who wins out, and the victim is steadily isolated from the family and friends. In the short term, Miss Markle will assert control in some form, and in her world, she'll be winning. Of course, there is yet more that is yet to happen with this ongoing saga of a very royal narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.